Hello everyone, and today's video is brought to you in association with Keeps, but more on that in a moment. Star Trek Voyager debuted in 1994 and ran for seven years, finishing up in 2001. Since then, only two characters, Janeway and Seven of Nine, have returned for any sort of role in the franchise to date, leaving fans with a Voyager-shaped hole in their hearts. Me included. I am Marcus Bronzy, and this is Trek Culture with the cast of Voyager, Where Are They Now? Number 15. Susanna Thompson a seasoned character actor, Susanna Thompson has several Star Trek appearances on her credit list. While she is most recognizable as the Borg Queen from Dark Frontier and Unimatrix Zero, she also played Dr. Lenara Khan in Deep Space Nine, along with two appearances in The Next Generation. Thompson has been in the business for many years, and busy she has kept. She's appeared in the CW show The Arrow, also been in CSI, NCIS, along with loads of other roles in TV. In 2003, in an interview where she was discussing Deep Space Nine, she said it was really good working with Avery Brooks and Terry Farrell. They said that they helped her to feel comfortable in the run-up to what would become some of Star Trek's most controversial episodes. Number 14. John Reese davis Appearing at the end of Voyager's third season and twice in its fourth, John Reese davis lent his considerable talents portraying the Italian maestro himself. Leonardo da Vinci. Almost immediately after his work on the show, Davies would fly to New Zealand, where of course, he would immortalize himself in the eyes of an entirely new generation of Tolkien fans in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He is one of the many Trek alumni to have voiced a role in Disney's Gargoyles cartoon. While perhaps he'll always now be known as that dwarf from Middle Earth, his time on the holodeck with Janeway stands as some of the more enjoyable moments of Voyager. Hello. I'm Jean-Luc Picard from a universe where I used Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service that makes it easy and affordable to treat male pattern baldness. The simple fact is that two out of every three men will experience male pattern baldness at some point in their lives. And I'm here to tell you that the hairline will be drawn here, this far, no further. Now, of course, it couldn't be caused by gatekeeping Star Trek. Uh, STD isn't real Star Trek. Because I like New Trek. But this doesn't have to be something that you face. Because thanks to these FDA approved medications delivered directly to your door with 24 seven access to a doctor, you can start treating your male pattern baldness today. Quite simply, my friends, if you don't want to end up with a fabulous beard and nothing on top, Start using Keeps today, and this is a future you won't have to face. If you're ready to take action, then head to keeps.com forward slash trekculture or hit the link in the description below and you'll get 50% off your first purchase. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com forward slash trekculture and you can have a fine head of hair just like me. Now, make it so. Ow! Number 13, Josh Clark. Poor Lieutenant Carey. Tipped to be the new chief engineer of Voyager in the first season, he was quickly beaten to the post by Belana Torres, suffering not only the indignity of losing his job, but a broken nose for his troubles as well. He would appear in seven episodes throughout the show's run, popping up a couple of times in the later seasons, where he was given quite a prominent role in the seventh season episode Friendship One. It was clear that after being absent for so long, well, you know, it just wasn't going to end well for him. But Josh Clark, on the other hand, seems to have done just fine. He originally appeared in The Next Generation as a tactical officer back in season one who could theoretically have been Kerry, meaning that he would be the only crewman to serve under both Picard and Janeway to date. Since Star Trek, he has kept busy appearing on Modern Family, Grey's Anatomy and Shameless, just to name a few. He may not have been the most successful engineer, but thankfully, his acting career is going just fine. Number 12, Dwight Schultz. Charles was a crossover from The Next Generation to Voyager, playing Reginald Barkley in both series. Fun fact, he actually ended up playing the character more regularly on Voyager. While many of his scenes were alongside Robert Picardo, Schultz managed to easily slot in with the regular cast and crew. He would go on to appear in Endgame, completing his arc as one of the main factors in getting Voyager home. Since the show finished, he has stuck mainly to voice acting. He's appeared along with many other Trek alumni in Seth MacFarlane's Family Guy. He's also appeared in Nickelodeon's show Cat Dog, Final Fantasy games, and a bunch of other video games often heard as a radio host. He was part of the cast for Batman Arkham Knight, joining the list of Trek actors who have also voiced Batman characters along the way. Number 11, 
Manu Ente Raimi. As the first actor to play Ichib, Ente Raimi joined Voyager in its sixth season and remained until the show wrapped. When the character Ichib returned for Picard, another actor was brought in to play the role. Following his time on Trek, Ente Raimi has kept himself busy with various projects, often writing and directing his own work. He has consistently spoken out about his love of Star Trek, though he would come under fire for online comments made in the wake of Anthony Rapp's revelations about Kevin Spacey. Many feel that this is the reason he was not asked to reprise his role in Picard. Even though he apologised to Rapp himself and the Trek community online, it seems like he may not be coming to Trek anytime soon. He has, however, appeared in many other projects and TV series, including One Tree Hill and Las Vegas. He has several film credits under his belt as well, and he is active on Twitter and engages daily with fans. Number 10. Jennifer Lean Kez was one of the shaky additions to Voyager, never really seeming to land her right niche. Whilst writers tried to give her nice compelling storylines, they wrote themselves into a corner by giving her such a short lifespan, effectively stonewalling how much they could do with her. The character was hard to really identify with and at the end of Voyager's third season, the producers decided to fire Lean. Immediately after leaving the show, she started voice acting in Men in Black, the series, also contributing to The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Her peak would come in 1998 when she appeared alongside Avery Brooks in the acclaimed American History X. Unfortunately, over the last decade, Lean has also been in the spotlight for negative reasons. She has retired from acting and public appearances and has not attended a Star Trek convention in quite some time. Number 9. Robert Duncan McNeil Robert Duncan McNeil first appeared in Star Trek Back in the Next Generation, portraying cadet Nicholas Locarno, a bad boy who gets Wesley Crusher into a whole ton of trouble. He ends the episode expelled from Starfleet Academy, and that was the last we heard from him, technically. Because the character of Tom Paris is effectively Locarno, he allegedly was rewritten to avoid giving royalties to the writers of the first episode. That theory itself is up for debate, but the end result is that Tom Paris was born. McNeil is in every episode of Voyager, beginning his life as a cheeky flyboy who finds it hard to follow the rules, before switching over the course of the series to a fiercely loyal pilot of the ship along with loving husband of Bilana Torres. He was the only actor to appear alongside Ray Walston, aka the legendary Boothby, in all three of his Star Trek appearances. During his time on the show, McNeil would begin what would end up becoming his true career directing. He has also said that he was offered the opportunity to direct an episode of Discovery, though was unavailable at the time. He has recently started a podcast with the gentleman that is up next on this list. Number 8. Garrett Wong Harry Kim, Star Trek's eternal ensign, was played by Garrett Wong for the entirety of the show's run, and it was not smooth sailing throughout. He was the first actor on any Star Trek series to have his request to direct turned out during the show's hiatus between seasons 3 and 4 was heavily rumoured to be written out as well. But he was not, and we got to enjoy Kim for the rest of Voyager's run. Since Star Trek, Wong has appeared in several smaller parts throughout the series. He appeared in the Western series Into the West in a recurring role. He followed this up appearing in Star Trek of Gods and Men directed by Tim Russ. Most recently, he has started a podcast with co-star Robert Duncan McNeil, entitled The Delta Flyers. Number 7. Robert Beltran Robert Beltran is a Mexican-American actor who seems to have had his biggest career credits to date before Star Trek. He was the leading actor of the cult film Night of the Comet and guest starred in several films and TV shows before he scored the gig on Voyager as Chakotay. Beltran was one of the most outspoken actors during his time on the show, criticising both the writing and directing. He was very vocal about how he felt Chakotay was being forgotten and left to stagnate as the series went along. His words became so harsh that producers Sir Kenneth Biller was quoted saying, I think Robert Beltran should stop whining and do his job. Ouch. He once said in an interview that Voyager was punishment for everything in his life up to that point. After the show ended, however, there would be no more leading roles, at least to date. He had a recurring role as a casino promoter on the HBO series Big Love. He has become something of a regular, though, at Star Trek conventions, learning to enjoy his status as a star made by the fans. One thing he doesn't like about Trek, though, is the idea of the Prime Directive, calling it fascist crap. To leave a species to die when one has the power to help. What he does take away from the show, however, is time spent working with his fellow crew. 
Of that, at least, he is much warmer, expressing that he has many fond memories of his time with them. In August 2021, Beltran broke the news at the 55-year Mission Conventions Voyager panel. During said panel, Beltran said that he's working on a voiceover animation thing that Kate, Kate Mulgrew, is doing. And that, of course, is Star Trek Prodigy. This slip-up from Beltran was actually a further confirmation from a tweet the day before from the series creators of Prodigy, which said, we see Chakotay is trending on Twitter and we're totally down for that. Whoa, 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 Marcus, Marcus, I'm gonna let you finish, I'm gonna let you finish. But just a tiny little update has just come in since that Robert Beltran has in fact confirmed that he will be taken on the recurring role of Captain Chicote in Star Trek Prodigy. Check out my news video after you finish this video. Now, straight back to you, Marcus. Thanks very much. Number six, Roxanne Dawson. As Voyager's half Klingon chief engineer, Belana Torres was fiery and quick to anger, something that only doubled when Seven of Nine joined the ship's crew. The pair were often seen at loggerheads, each of them convinced that the other was wrong. Roxanne Dawson, however, is a much more agreeable person. She had been working steadily in Hollywood by the time she'd won the role. She'd previously been married to Deep Space Nine guest star Casey Biggs and was credited as Roxanne Biggs Dawson for much of the show's early run. But it was as Roxanne Dawson that she would begin a career that would lead her past Voyager, directing. Since the show finished, she has been busy behind the camera, directing two episodes of Voyager and 10 episodes of Enterprise. She has also directed episodes of Crossing Jordan, Lost, the OC, Heroes, and Close to Home. Number 5. Tim Russ Tim Russ had a history with Star Trek before landing the role of Tuvok. He had originally auditioned for Geordie LaForge and had roles in both The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Star Trek Generations. However, it was when the Vulcaneers met Janeway and the crew of the Voyager that he really became known by audiences. When the show ended in 2001, he began to focus more on his directing and singing. One of his albums features a song that appears as an Easter egg on the Voyager Season 2 DVDs. He has also continued to act, appearing in ER, Hannah Montana, and American Horror Story. He hasn't entirely left the Star Trek universe either. He directed the internet series Star Trek of Gods and Men, featuring a large ensemble of the former Trek alumni. He also appeared in the fan film slash pilot Star Trek Renegades, reprising his role as Tuvok. He cites his love of astronomy and science as some of the things that he's taken away from his time on Voyager. As a show that's tasked with social commentary when it began, he sees it as becoming one of the most expansive roles, one that has opened up the universe to him and others as well. Number 4 Ethan Phillips. Neelix was everyone's favourite chef and morale officer, and it's safe to say he was a bit of an acquired taste at the beginning of his stint in Voyager, but he evolved into one of the more beloved characters over the run of the series. Though he may not have had many of the meatier storylines, he definitely became an essential player as the show continued. Ethan Phillips had plenty of experience in front of the camera before joining the show. He had previously appeared in The Next Generation as a Ferengi and would return for Enterprise as well. He made an uncredited cameo appearance in Star Trek First Contact as the holographic Maitre D appearing with Robert Picardo. Since the show finished, he has continued to appear on television, including Jag, Touched by an Angel and Boston Legal. He's also stuck with sci-fi along the way as well. He's continued to work with Tim Russ on various projects, including Star Trek of Gods and Men, and he's also done some voice acting along the way, appearing in several Nickelodeon movies. Neelix may not be at the top of people's list of characters, but he played an integral part of the show's journey and became something of a warm heart amongst the crew. Number 3. Robert Picardo Star Trek's most famous hologram and much like his counterpart who is flying out in the TARDIS somewhere, he is still only known as the Doctor, or Doc for short if you want. Bob Picardo had a long career before Star Trek, most memorably appearing in both The Howling and Gremlins 2 A New Batch. After Star Trek, he would become well known to sci-fi fans as the initially highly irritating Richard Woosley on Stargate SG-1 and Stargate Atlantis, returning for one episode of Stargate Universe. He would rise from occasional guest star to main actor in Atlantis' fifth season, making him the only actor to be both a main character in Star Trek and Stargate, though several other actors guest starred across both franchises. 
He's had a career that spans several decades and he's still active today. Recently, he's appeared in Seth MacFarlane's The Orville, making him one of the many Star Trek cameos, or should we say nods to the show that he has boasted. He's also released music CDs and has written several books as the character of the Doctor. There were some recent rumblings of a guest appearance on Star Trek Picard, but whether this is true or not remains to be seen. It's also in question as to whether he would be playing his holographic self or the role of his creator, Louis Zimmerman. Either way, having Picardo return to the franchise, well, that would be a treat. Number 2. Jerry Ryan It was a nice surprise when Jerry Ryan returned to the Star Trek universe reprising her role as Seven of Nine in Star Trek's Picard. However, what did she get up to in the years before this? She moved almost immediately once Voyager had ended its run to Boston Legal to star alongside William Shatner. From there, she has appeared in many recurring and smaller roles. Before Voyager ended, she did have a small role in Dracula 2000 before going on to appear in Body of Proof, MacGyver and Two and a Half Men. Ryan has been both candid and reserved about her experiences whilst filming Voyager. She's spoken about how difficult her first couple of years on the show were and it wasn't just the way that the show was shot, which is quite intensive. There was a particular co-star who she doesn't name but we pretty much have confirmed is Kate Mulgrew, brought about in part because of the view that Ryan was being brought on board to sex up the show. Whilst this may or may not be a fair comment, the fact that Ryan developed Seven into such a lasting character, so lasting in fact she was actually asked to reprise her role in Star Trek Nemesis and approached by the producers of Enterprise to play a long lost relative of Seven's, meant that Ryan was at the end of the day not just eye candy, she was a fully developed character. Number 1 Kate Mulgrew as Star Trek's first leading woman, not the first female captain, shout out to Madge Sinclair on that one, Kate Mulgrew was tasked with something of an uphill climb when Voyager debuted in 1994. Not only was she a relatively late addition to the cast, replacing a last minute dropout, but there was a lot of indecision about her character from the off. Janeway's hair was a massive point of focus, not least because the show was a flagship entry on the network. However, after several hairstyles and seven seasons, Mulgrew cemented her in Trek history as one of the best captains of the lot. Since the show wrapped in 2001, she has kept herself very busy as a prolific stage actress for one, with credits ranging from the 70s to this present day. She's also acted in loads of television series, I mean Red from Netflix's Orange is the New Black is one that I think we all can say is another standout character of hers. She was interviewed by William Shatner as part of his Captain series, explaining in great detail the impact that Star Trek has had on her life. She's written a memoir titled born with teeth and continues to write, act and support theatre to this day. And for those that feel like they didn't get enough of Janeway the first time round, she'll also be in Star Trek Prodigy, which is out in October 2021. I've been Marcus Bronzy, this is Trek Culture and this has been the cast of Voyager, where are they now? If you've got any gems about the Voyager cast, don't keep them all locked up in your mind, share them with us in the comments and please don't forget to drop us a like and sub. You can also follow Trek Culture on Twitter. I too am on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok at Marcus Bronzy, M-A-R-C-U-S-B-R-O-N-Z-Y. And my podcast called How To Kill An Hour is wherever you listen to those.